Hello and welcome. We are discussing the electronic properties of solid, and uh, in that uh, we have so far uh, shown that some of the classical treatments of electronic theory work uh, fairly well. Uh, if you are particularly describing transport, uh, thermal conductivity, and so on. But then we also mentioned at some point that uh, it uh, such kind of treatments go horribly wrong when you are measuring quantities which are particularly for example, which require uh, you to find out the amount of energy that a system absorbs a ga gas of electron uh, in a solid uh, absorbs. And uh, uh, for example, specific heat is one such quantity which is a derivative of the internal energy with respect to temperature and that uh, obviously, goes wrong in a classical treatment. Now, <coughs> as we started doing we were calculating the quantum mechanical description uh, of uh, electron gas. We are still in the free electron gas regime, electrons are not interacting with each other. So, in this uh, approximation, <coughs> the uh, <coughs> spectrum is still uh, p square by twice m. So, it is a free, a free electron like spectrum E equal to p square by twice m, but we have to now treat these electrons as uh, quantum mechanical objects. These are quantum particles. So, we started doing it, we wrote down the Schrodinger equation, we found out the density of states uh, that is allowed to these uh, electronic states and uh, uh, then we said that uh, once you have that, you have to also remember that uh, fermions electrons which are fermions uh, must obey the uh, Fermi Dirac statistics instead of the Maxwell Boltzmann statistics that we have been using so far. <coughs> now, this has a drastic effect because if you look at the, the picture of uh, for example, the distributions uh, two distributions uh, uh, for, for example, the, the uh, max comp for the, this picture the top picture compares Maxwell uh, uh, Boltzmann distribution with uh, velocity distribution with Fermi Dirac distribution and if you look at it, uh, you see that at low temperature the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution basically shoots up. This is a close up view of it, uh, the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution is basically shooting up, uh, whereas the Fermi Dirac distribution is uh, always limited by the value 1. So, <coughs> for example, this, this is your Maxwell Boltzmann distribution, velocity distribution. Uh, number of particles within a within a range of uh, velocity v and v plus dv. So, that uh, goes like this e to the power minus m v square by 2 k b t uh, <coughs> and whereas, the the uh, <coughs> Fermi Dirac distribution uh, goes as this is uh, Fermi Dirac distribution this this picture is the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution whereas, the Fermi Dirac distribution goes like uh, this that it, uh, it is limited by the value 1 and uh, <coughs> there is a very sharp drop at the Fermi energy. So, this is the E f. <coughs> so, this is done at a finite temperature. So, that you can see there is a slight deviation it is not exactly a vertical drop there is a slight deviation from vertical drop we will come to it. Now, <coughs> So, how did we suspect that uh, we have to use uh, 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 the Fermi Dirac distribution instead of uh, Boltzmann distribution? Uh, it came from the fact that the, uh, the if you look at the specific heats, uh, the specific heat or heat capacity in a solid uh, at uh, moderately high temperature is actually uh, dominated by the contributions from the ions. Now, both ions and electrons do contribute to specific heat. Whereas, the ionic contribution at any moderate temperature dominates the, uh, <coughs> the value of the uh, electronic contribution. Uh, on the other hand, if you go down to low temperatures, then there is a, re there is a uh, regime where the electronic contribution to specific heat, uh, in a, we are talking about metals. So, in that uh, the electronic specific heat starts dominating over the ionic contribution. <coughs> now, typically at around 300 degree Kelvin, 
the classical uh, the uh, the uh, specific heat is typically about one hundredth of the classical value, which is uh, three by two n kb uh, per unit volume. So, <coughs> so this factor of one by hundred was missing in the uh, classical description, which gave us this kind this value. And it was uh, quite surprising because uh, even a person like Lorenz, who claimed that uh, it is extremely surprising that for description of transport uh, and conductions, uh, conduction of uh, electricity, the electronic, the classical description of electron gas is working so well, uh, the free electron description, whereas for, uh, for specific heat it is going wrong by, by typically a factor of 100. So, this was a mystery at that point and then it was obviously later on realized that you have to once quantum mechanics came in that you have to use uh, <coughs> uh, classical you have to abandon classical statistical mechanics and use the quantum statistics which is the Fermi Dirac statistics for this calculation. And that basically severely restricts the, uh, the states and the electrons uh, that can accept a certain amount of energy. <coughs> Typically, the at uh, high T, at high T, the ionic uh, contribution to specific heat is dominating over C electronic. Okay, and uh, <coughs> around uh, T less than typically 300 degree Kelvin. Of course, the we know that uh, ionic contribution goes as T cube. This we will find out later, but <coughs> experimentally one knows that this is how specific heat goes <coughs> at moderate at around room temperature or slightly below it. At very low temperature much much below room temperature uh, the, the total specific heat has a uh, form like uh, <coughs> Uh, C gamma T plus A T cube. So, typically uh, this gamma T term dominates at very low temperature over this T cube term which comes from ions. So, one actually experimentally one sees that one uh, usual plots are C by T versus T square and it is obviously linear from this graph with a intercept which is gamma. From this you can actually determine the gamma. Uh, the units of specific heat are joules or calories per uh, <coughs> per uh, mole per degree. So, it is uh, C the unit is <coughs> joules or calories <coughs> per mole per degree Kelvin and gamma the unit is one more T will come in. So, this joule or calorie mole inverse degree k to the power minus 2. So, this is what uh, one actually plots uh, uh, one determines from the plot of C by T versus T square. <coughs> so, our uh, as we said in the classical description, we will always get this C versus T stuck at 3 by 2 n k, right? n k b. So, this is a value that uh, give that typically comes uh, from uh, Maxwell Boltzmann that comes from Maxwell Boltzmann distribution and uh, we calculate uh, half n k b t of energy per degree of freedom and so this is how you get the classical law. It is completely temperature independent as you see uh, whereas, the, the uh, specific heat that we just plotted linear is linear at low temperature. So, one has to make a and it goes down to 0. So, at t goes to 0. So, this is something that one has to figure out and it was Fermi who first figured it out uh, from a very basic argument. Uh, using the uh, quantum statistics, which is the Fermi Dirac uh, statistics. It is of course, uh, his own it goes by his own name. 
So, what he did was to realize a simple fact which I will show you uh, uh, here for example. <coughs> so, let us just look at the Fermi Dirac statistics a bit and that itself will tell us what to look for. So, this is the Fermi Dirac energy distribution for an ideal electron gas in thermal equilibrium uh, with a heat bath at temperature T the probability that an allowed state with energy E will be occupied is f of E and that f of E has this form. So, it has a form f of E equal to 1 by E to the power <coughs> E minus for an electron gas E minus E f divided by k B t plus 1. Now, 1 by k B t is sometimes is written usually by beta. So, you will you will find that this is also written as it will be beta E minus E f plus 1. So, when t goes to 0 beta goes to infinity. <coughs> now, it immediately tells you that as uh, beta becomes large that is t becomes smaller this exponential quantity at the denominator for any e greater than e f starts dominating and uh, so that that quantity will uh, uh, be much more than 1 soon and then you can neglect it and you get the usual Maxwell Boltzmann uh, formula. <coughs> the other interesting thing is that if you look at the status the f e versus uh, uh, f e is plot versus e for example, at e f uh, at e f the value is exactly half. So, at E f this is 1 at low temperature very low temperature and then it deviates from uh, the value 1 and, but it is always stuck at the value half <coughs> no matter what the temperature is as long as you are at E equal to E f because then this is 0 1 by 2 is half. <coughs> So, that is the nature. So, the other interesting thing to note is that the, the deviation from 1 becomes uh, more and more as you as you go up in temperature that means, there are states now at this these energies beyond uh, the Fermi level. See chemical potential is the same as Fermi level at, at e, uh, chemical potential is the same as Fermi energy at uh, temperature 0, but as temperature rises chemical potential also shifts will come come to that but the the more important thing is the change in the nature of this curve it becomes uh, the the it, it uh, the value of f e deviates from 1 goes below 1 here and it uh, and beyond e mu it has a finite value now while at zero temperature it had it, it was just a sharp drop at uh, uh, the chemical potential or same as free and uh, same as fermi energy Okay. <clears throat> so, at very high temperature as I said as you can see from this curve, this curve gives you the Maxwell Boltzmann uh, distribution as well. You can see that it is still going up and up and up, it is shooting up as you go down in temperature, it go down in energy. Whereas, uh, this one the Fermi Dirac distribution is a line which is uh, going uh, <coughs> which is a, it's a curve which is going uh, below 1 at less than E less than mu and then it, it is a finite at higher temperature and at very high temperature of course, uh, <coughs> when uh, sorry at very uh, uh, when E minus mu is much much greater than k B t the exponential term is dominant the Boltzmann distribution uh, is uh, obtained at at, tem at uh, energies at very high uh, very high compared to the value of k B t. <coughs> so, that is uh, exactly what you can see that at large uh, uh, energies the two statistics uh, sort of merge. <coughs> One can define a Fermi temperature which is just the E f by k B. So, k B T f is equal to Fermi uh, energy that defines the Fermi temperature. <coughs> now, comes the question as to why statistics is so important to getting that linear in t term and getting a factor of nearly 1 by 100 compared to the classical value of uh, electronic specific heat. 
Okay. So, let us just try to understand physically what is happening. Now, as we uh, discussed in the in one of the previous classes that uh, a gas of uh, even free fermions, the, the gas of fermions are uh, uh, is uh, uh, allow it has states to go to in quantum mechanical description. So, the states are filled in uh, by pairs, pair of electron with up spin and down spin. So, you keep filling from the bottom and as, as you go up and up and up when you exhaust your electron number the highest level that you fill up is called the Fermi energy. So, that means an electron deep below the Fermi energy cannot uh, take uh, an energy and go up because all the states above it or even below it are completely filled up. So, the electron can cannot take an energy which is uh, which will not take it beyond the Fermi energy. So, if you want to go give an electron an energy at the uh, at somewhere below the Fermi level, then you have to bring it above the Fermi level. Below that, there is no state that is allowed. These states are all occupied by uh, electrons already, and that is what Pauli principle tells us that you cannot occupy a state by uh, more than two electrons with up and down spins. So, that is the picture on the right hand side shown. So, suppose I want to take one of these electrons from here to anywhere up, I can only go above this, above the Fermi level. So, that means when you are giving a thermal energy to this electron gas, uh, where all states below Fermi level are filled up, up to Fermi level are filled up, uh, then you can you can of course give energy. Uh, the this is the amount of energy you are giving kb kb times t, but that energy will only be accepted by electrons which are only below kb t from from this Fermi level Fermi energy, because any electron below that if it gets a k b t amount of energy it has to go somewhere below the Fermi level and that is not allowed because these states are already occupied. So, only electrons that can take that amount of energy k b t uh, are the ones which are within a narrow region uh, just below the Fermi level uh, whose width is basically k b t. So, that is the argument that uh, tells you that the classical description which allowed all these electrons sitting here at the bottom to take the amount, amount of energy k b t and that is how you, you calculated that uh, 3 by 2 n k b t uh, is, is no longer valid that argument is gone. So, <coughs> the so called phase space is severely restricted the number of electrons that can take the energy thermal energy uh, is severely restricted compared to the original classical description. In this quantum description, you cannot uh, uh, give, an, uh, give energy to a particle which is uh, to an electron which is below the energy uh, k b t of the Fermi level. Okay. So, how much energy do they take? So, that is uh, one can actually uh, do some small uh, back of the envelope kind of calculation some estimate one can make easily. So, let us see how one uh, makes this est estimate. A look at this uh, figure, <coughs> there is a region of k b t below the E f, which is what uh, which the electrons sitting there can uh, electrons which are there can take the energy k b t. So, how many electron how many states are here at the Fermi level the g of E f. So, <coughs> the number of electrons there is basically twice g of E f. So, and each of them is taking an energy uh, k b t. So, so the number of electrons is the number of states is uh, G E F each each can occupy two electrons and the width over which uh, you have to count is uh, K B T from the Fermi level. So, the change in energy per unit volume is basically the density of states at the Fermi level which we assume to be a constant within the range of K B T of the Fermi level because K B T is uh, one more than less than a hundredth of uh, E f. So, within that uh, temperature range the density of states remains almost flat. So, this is the <coughs> number of excited states number of electrons uh, these are number of states that uh, will will be able to accept the energy the electrons sitting in those states will be able to accept the energy 
how much energy will they accept they will each accept kbt and there are two electrons per uh, per uh, each density each state so or each orbital so then this this is the total number then uh, so <coughs> so i can uh, one can take so this is kbt square uh, kb uh, kbt into kbt into gf the derivative of that with respect to temperature will give you this formula so it is uh, evident that uh, this is uh, g of ef into kb square into t so this gives me the linear dependence uh, of the uh, <coughs> of uh, the specific heat uh, in the electron free electron gas we are still in free electron gas as i said but there is a fermi surface and there is a fermi energy corresponding to that <coughs> so that's the argument that uh, first uh, fermi put forward and said that look at uh, first of all this uh, rectifies two big problems one that at low temperatures the specific heat coming from electrons uh, is of the order of of is linearly proportional to t and the second thing is that its value is much 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 less than the classical value because ef for example is inversely proportional to one to ef in uh, uh, sorry g of ef is inversely proportional to ef so this is already kbt into t by ef i will come back to it uh, when we do another calculation and show you that this uh, gives us a factor of one, uh, nearly 1 over 100 or more uh, and that rectifies the problem of the number and uh, more importantly the linear temperature dependence comes out of this calculation it goes to zero at zero temperature and it uh, solves the the problem that uh, people saw in the experiments in the uh, early 20th centuries once quantum mechanics came in <coughs> so one can do a more uh, sophisticated calculation and uh, <coughs> to do that one has to <coughs> start again from the free electron uh, uh, theory there are many arguments many uh, calculations that are given in several books for example Kitt uh, charles kittel's solid state physics has a back of the envelope kind of simple calculation but uh, a really thorough calculation was first done by uh, sommerfeld and uh, that calculation is uh, <coughs> fairly complicated it's long it's not that uh, one has to remember it but one, one i will just show you how he corrected this uh, this uh, result uh, to up to order t square so the linear temperature dependence comes out correctly the although the prefactors are not exactly the correct ones uh, the then the the higher order terms uh, are also uh, <coughs> not coming and that comes that i will show you where it comes from see basically what happens is that the assumption that we are taking in most of this back of the envelope calculations that the chemical potential is still uh, the same as the fermi energy this assumption actually is no longer correct at uh, any finite temperature and as temperature rises the, the chemical potential deviates from the fermi level so this factor e minus ef has to be replaced by e minus mu which is a function of temperature so you have to do the calculation accordingly and that is exactly what sommerfeld did and uh, so let's just look at <coughs> his calculation just for for a reference it's not required that you have to remember that calculation but that calculation is important in the in, uh, in the in the context of history of free electron gas and its uh, specific heat and corrections uh, using quantum statistics so i'll just uh, go through it briefly <coughs> now just to recap these are the things that we have already done epsilon k for a free electron gas is given by each particle carries this energy p square by twice m which is h cross square k square by twice m where k is a wave vector <coughs> now internal energy of course is uh, then epsilon k times the fermi function because you have to find out how many how many particles are occupying that energy state e so that is uh, uh, f of ek fermi function then 2 comes from this degeneracy spin degeneracy 
So, it is the sum over all k's. Now, the energy density is of course, you have to divide by by the volume and uh, and the electron density n is capital N divided by V and they are also given by uh, these kind of formulas. So, u u small u is now d k by 4 pi cube you can convert this k sum to an integral because it is very dense the intervals of k are extremely small uh, that we have done in the in one of the previous classes where in we introduce the density of states. So, you can uh, convert the sum to an integral and uh, <coughs> remember that uh, look at this integral the right hand side all all quantities which are functions of k are actually also functions of energy this energy e k h cross square k square by 2 is m the functional dependence on k enters only through the energy. So, this is very crucial we will just come to it. Uh, similarly, for n you can you just have to sum the Fermi function uh, for all k values. <coughs> now, this is where uh, the this in, uh, this feature that in any function capital F for example, if it is a function of k only through epsilon k not directly depending on k then of course, you can convert this uh, this integral. Uh, now, of course, this is no longer dependent on the angle this function f is function of energy only which is k is a function of k square. So, there is no angle dependence here. So, you can simply integrate out the angles which is 4 pi. So, 4 pi into k square by 4 pi cube. So, that gives me k square by pi square d k into f of e k and this is the relation that is important that this summation uh, this integral over k can be converted to a integ to an integral over density of states this we had done in a previous lecture uh, you can look up uh, your previous notes. So, this makes uh, life much simpler because now you have to do only one integral over the energy. <coughs> now, the d of uh, we will already did all these calculations in the previous in a previous class that the density of states for a free electron dispersion which is uh, E goes as k square. Uh, is uh, for three dimension it is like this in general it is uh, we showed that in any dimension if e goes as k square then uh, the density of states g of e will go as e to the power d by 2 minus 1. So, in 3 d it is uh, <coughs> e to the power half in 2 d e to the power 0 that means, energy independent and 1 d e to the power minus half. So, this we had done in, our, in one of the previous classes and showed how these density of states uh, uh, behave their plots. <coughs> okay. Now, so once you have this density of states uh, g of e then of course, these integrals have to be done now. So, these integrals are uh, not so straightforward because as I said the Fermi function contains a chemical potential which is temperature dependent and that is exactly what uh, Sommerfeld did and I uh, will show the the, the calculations uh, in a, in the next class, but the again I uh, emphasize that you do not have to remember this, but you have to only realize that these calculations are non trivial and uh, they require you to go. Uh, so, the, the linear temperature dependence can come out with uh, just a hand waving argument as I showed, but the coefficients will not be correct. Uh, the other thing that is required is that the chemical potentials dependence on temperature has also to be taken care of and that is uh, something that we Sommerfeld did and that is something I will do in the next class. Again you do not need to copy it or you do not need to uh, do this calculation yourself, but you just remember the logic behind this calculation and why it was done and I will show you how it was done, but that is just for reference. It is an important calculation, it uh, is historically extremely important and it gives results up to a term t square. So, that is what I will do in the next class. Thank you.